going to be entertaining. <laughs> so I'm live on TikTok over here, and I'm live on Facebook over here. So welcome. I'm so glad to talk to you guys. Um, and so uh, I want to talk to you today about uh, managing your energy as a spiritual practitioner and coach, uh, teacher, whatever, right? Because here, here's the thing, right? We've got all of these wonderful experiences in life that we get to go through and all these wonderful people that we get to work with. And the challenge becomes, how do we maintain our energy field while we're helping other people learn how to evolve theirs? And that's a big deal. It, it's a really big deal. It, and it's, it can be very difficult if your boundaries aren't good and if you don't have um, a sense of uh, how to curate your life effectively. Because if you are, if you're giving too much away, that's number one, if you're giving too much away, then you're gonna end up empty. If you're not doing enough to refuel, then you're gonna end up empty. If you're not great at receiving, then you're gonna end up empty uh, if you don't take enough downtime, right? And so there's a lot of ways in which it is very easy to have our energy field not be so great, right? Uh, and I wanna to talk to you specifically about the news right now because of the, the stuff that's going on uh, that I can't say to avoid being canceled in the, <laughs> in the algorithms. But uh, I, I wanna say this. And this is gonna be true no matter whether it's this thing going on or something else going on. Um, it's telling me that I need to change my frames per second. Oh, I don't wanna learn more, just, just, just where, where do I fix it? <laughs> where do I fix it? Where is my, where is my frames per second? Close other things, it doesn't like my other things. I'm closing all my screens, all my things, all my screens. All right, so, um, Dismiss. Frames per second. How do I fix that? Uh, video resolution. I don't think I can fix it once I got started. So it's going to suck. Life goes on. So anyway, if you want something that's less uh, stuttery, come over to TikTok. <laughs> I'm under the same name on TikTok. You can find me there. I'll be doing the same live over there. So yay, multi-screens. So uh, let's talk about what's happening in the world right now. And uh, hey guys, nice to see you. And what's happening in the world, there's always something happening in the world. I wanna just start with that. I have been on the planet for 54 years. There's never a year in which something horrific or you know offensive or whatever is, is not happening. It, it just is, it's a perpetual state of being. And so you need to learn how to manage your energy. And so you, know, you don't want to be dealing with stuff that is, um, that is draining your energy or getting you all oh, so upset, right? You don't wanna be dealing with that if you are um, having to maintain your energy for other people. And so the key here is to make sure that, um, uh, sorry, I'm getting a request for somebody to go live with me on another platform. I'm dual, I'm dual doing this, so, so people on the other platform won't be able to hear me. So sorry, I can't go live with you right now. Um, so the 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 thing that you have to pay attention to is that there is only so much you personally can do about any given situation that's happening in the world. Uh, and so the key is do what you can do, and then let it go, because it. Other people's pain will not be improved by you making yourself miserable. It just isn't going to happen. And if you thought about it, if you're sitting there going, oh, but I need to have compassion for them, I need to have compassion. Yes, great, fine, have compassion. But the problem is that you already have compassion or else you wouldn't be feeling like you need to have compassion, right? So you've already done the thing that you're trying to do. There's no need to beat yourself up to feel like you've done enough, okay? And if you are feeling the need to do that, then that's one of the things that you need to, to know about managing your energy field. You need to, to know how to uh, choose what to put your energy into, right? So the, the thing that you want to 
uh, do is do what you can do and then let it go and move on with your day because it does not serve the world for us to be holding a low vibration. Our job is to stay high vibe. Our job is to stay centered and focused and present and in our sovereign power. And if we're not doing that, then we're not doing our jobs, right? So again, if you're just coming into this live, this is for spiritual uh, practitioners and coaches, uh, and we're talking about how to maintain your energy at a high vibration. And so, you know, if you guys have questions, feel free to hop into the comments and ask questions. Uh, I am monitoring them on both screens. So if I get a little distracted, I apologize. Um, okay, so that's, that's number one, all right? Number one is telling me to scroll right. Okay, there we go. Um, number one is to maintain your energy away from the media, right? Because the media is a great way to suck your energy. All right, number two is when we're dealing with our energetics, we need to recognize where our energy is, okay? It's very easy when you're all excited about something to put way too much energy into it, right? And when you do that, you just suck your energy down and then it's very hard for people to find you, okay? They, it, you actually can sometimes, I've done this, where, where if you give away too much energy, you get burned out, then suddenly you are now blocking all incoming business. Yeah, that sucks. Because <laughs> you're like, I don't want to talk to anybody. People suck, right? <laughs> you just Your energy field is so low. You just don't want to do it, right? And so, you know, you want to make sure that you are maintaining your energy field at a good level. And what that means is taking sufficient downtime. It means not pushing past your point where you feel yummy about what you're doing. I swear to God, somebody's on my roof. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Things just keep thunking. Um, but it, it pushing past uh, the point where you feel yummy about stuff is exactly how you end up burnt out. And people will say, and I, I, this frustrates me to no end. People say, oh, you can't burn out doing what you love. Screw that. I have burned out many times doing exactly what I love, okay? Because I'm like, I love it. I want to do more of it. It's exciting. It doesn't matter. I'm exhausted. I want to do it, right? If you're not keeping in touch with your own body and with your own emotional state, then you are going to put yourself in a position where you are actually sabotaging your business and sabotaging your ability to work with your clients because you have uh, let yourself get too low energetically. Okay, so now, third one's going to be a little less popular, but this is about dealing with overly needy clients. Okay, now I say overly needy. Uh, so what I mean by that is that there are some clients who are meant to be coaching clients and there are some clients who are meant to be in therapy. If your clients are constantly collapsing and you're having to drag them up off the floor to get them to believe that they have a right to exist, they need to be in therapy, not working with you. Okay, that's a therapist's job. And so I want you to really cultivate a, a client list that is ready to do the work that you have to offer. Because people in collapse, people in survival, they're not ready to do spiritual work. It's not their fault. They're just not ready, okay? And could they become ready eventually? Yes, but that's what therapy is for, right? If they're in survival financially, they're not ready because they're too busy trying to figure out how to pay the rent, right? You have to know who is energetically and emotionally and financially and time-wise, they can also be overdone time-wise. And if they have no time at all, that's a time survival mode. If they're not, if they're in survival mode in any of those ways, I mean, they can be financially very well off. They can be emotionally very well off. But if they have zero time, they're not going to be able to do the work, right? Because their time is and energy is put in the wrong direction, right? Or not the wrong direction, but a, a direction other than the one that you're trying to walk them through, right? So if this 
is the case, you should not be signing these clients up. Because what happens when you do, because we've all done it, <laughs> so what happens when you do, one is that you know that you shouldn't be signing them up when you do. And you're just, it, it's a bad idea. And so what ends up happening is you sign them up, you know you shouldn't have, and then the misery ensues for both them and you because they can't keep up in the program because they weren't ready. And they keep collapsing, which means that they keep calling you. I literally had a client who would text me 15, 20, 30 times in a, an hour and a half because she had collapsed, okay? You can't have that that will exhaust you i don't care if you're not even looking at your phone when you go to your phone you're like oh my god right so you you have to make sure that the clients that you are signing on are ready for the work that they are capable of doing it from a, from all of these different perspectives that they have the time the energy the money the the emotional resources and the ability to do the work and when you sign up people who are not ready, usually we do this because we're desperate for the money, right? Occasionally some people surprise us. The one I was describing surprised me because she was really solid and then she would collapse and I, I met her in a really solid space. So, you know, sometimes we, we get surprised and then you've got to adjust. But uh, most of the time when you hire, when you, when you uh, sign someone on who isn't ready, then you know it's because you're in a desperation state around your own money your own business and when you do that they're going to suck so much more of your time and energy and it's going to make you so much less money in the long run because you're going to be burnt out and fried and you're going to be going oh, i don't want to talk to people and then suddenly magically people start canceling their discovery calls <laughs> And, and you go, oh, I have free time, yay. And then, you know, a month from now you go, I have no money because you didn't have your discovery calls because you let yourself get burned out, right? So all of these things are why it's really important to be able to manage your energy as a spiritual teacher and coach. And when you do these things effectively, then you have the ability to be like, ah, oh, okay, this is, this is who I serve. This is who I want to work with. And ah, oh, I'm opening to bring that person into my life. And I'm super excited to bring them into my life, right? And so all of these things are the reasons why we end up with a better situation when we manage our energy. Now, those are things that the average person gets okay that might they make sense right i want to talk about managing your energy in terms of being an empath and in terms of your personal shields and the protections on your space your your office your home uh, all of these things because if you are not managing your energy in that way as well then you can have other issues because the more work we do in the energetic world the brighter we become on the astral plane and so more things notice us and they go Ooh, you're bright and shiny let me check you out and some of them will come and chew on you if you're not careful right so i want you to be aware that it is an important thing to be able to um to manage your own the way that you're holding your energy as an empath and if you don't know what i'm talking about if you haven't listened to my podcast my spirit sherpa podcast um then you know go to my website at kellysparta.com uh, and you will find just on the homepage underneath my picture there's a thing it's a free e-course called boundaries for empaths and so if you are an empath and if you're a spiritual coach and teacher i promise you, you you're an empath <laughs> almost all of us are so uh you know go and uh, go and take that course and and it'll teach you exactly how to hold your energy appropriately so that you're not overwhelmed by other people's emotions so that you don't get stuck in other people's energy fields and all the hoo-ha that goes along with that right okay so you, you need to learn to manage that energy first that is the very first thing before you ever try to put up a shield before you ever try to put up a protection or a ward on your property or your business then what you need to do is you need to learn that first because otherwise your energy will be outside of those you'll you'll have shoved your energy field out so far that it'll be outside of those things and they won't work okay so if you've ever tried to put up a shield this is why it didn't work okay so 
that's the next piece is once you've mastered those then you've got to get your shields and your wards in place so that you can protect yourself and your aunt, your home or your office and your family from anything that might come and chew because as as a spiritual coach as a spiritual teacher occasionally things will try and get to us through our partners through our children through you know whatever so just be aware and so if you if you don't know how to do that i do teach that in my courses so you know feel free to give me a shout and we can talk about that. But this is a, a way of managing your energy as well, right? Because if your energy is being sucked by something that's chewing on you, that's gonna suck you dry too. If your energy is being pulled on by an energy vampire in your life because you don't have great boundaries around that, that's gonna affect your energy too, right? If you are walking through large groups of people and everybody's energy is like bothering you because <laughs> you know, you're overwhelmed with all of the energies there, you're gonna lose some energy to that too, right? All of these things are ways in which we need to maintain and manage our energy better. So with that said, uh, I just want to presence you to that, especially right now during the holidays when everything is so much stress, more stressful because people are going back to the family of origin and it's not always good, right? And so, uh, especially for us too, I mean, we, we may also have that issue, right? Uh, and so just to keep this in mind, because year round, this stuff is really important. But right now it is crucial because there's just, there's no room for error on this one, okay? So uh, if you are having problems maintaining your energy as a spiritual coach or practitioner and uh, teacher, then uh, you know, reach out. I'm happy to talk to you about how that can change for you and, and how to make that better. Uh, and if you're curious about how to make your business work better uh, and you wanna learn how to do that, uh, I, give me a shout. I have a spiritual coach practitioner, spir <laughs> spir <laughs> spiritual coach certification program. Yes, I can talk. I have a spiritual coach certification program that I can talk to you about where I can teach you how to do all of these things and so much more about how to get your business up and running and make it make it profitable for you. So uh, I'm glad you could come. Uh, I am hope to see you soon. And uh, I will put a link in the comments uh, on both of these. Well, I don't think I can do it on TikTok after it's over, but you can find the link in my bio on TikTok. Uh, and I will put a link in my comments on the Facebook Live to uh, let you guys know how to find me. And uh, we'll talk soon. And if you have any questions, I, I'm happy to take them. You know, just say, hey, wait, on either one of these. I am paying attention to the comments. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, and I will not sign off yet, but otherwise I have said what I have to say. <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing any comments. So thanks guys for coming out. I really appreciate you. Have a good one and we'll talk soon.